NetJets, the global private aviation leader, is known for personalizing every detail of your travels. Because NetJet's standard is not just to meet their definition of perfection, it's to exceed yours. Discover more at NetJets.com. On today's Smart 7, the Bojo Circus continues in bed with Margot Robbie and lots more. It's Tuesday the 13th of June. It's International Axe Throwing Day and happy birthday, Kathy Burke. The Smart 7. It's news, but not the news. The fallout from Boris Johnson's resignation continues with shockwaves of anger and relief echoing around the Conservative Party. He quit as an MP on Friday, apparently over a report from the Privileges Committee investigating whether he'd misled MPs about lockdown parties. It came just hours after Downing Street published his resignation honours list without the names of key supporters, including Nadine Doris and Sir Alok Sharma, who were expecting to be on it. The former PM and his supporters now claim the government edited the list. But the current PM, Rishi Sunak, accused Boris Johnson Johnson of asking him to overrule a panel who vetted the list of appointments to the House of Lords. Boris Johnson asked me to do something that I wasn't prepared to do. Uh, that was to you know, either overrule the HOLAC committee or to make promises with people. I wasn't prepared to do that. As I said, I didn't think it was right. And if people don't like that, then tough. And Labour fully intends to challenge the three seats left vacant by MPs who've resigned. Shadow Business Secretary Jonathan Reynolds thinks they have a strong case. We'll have to work very hard, put our case forward for that. But I think on getting this country back on its feet, restoring some pride and self-respect and removing this soap opera of a government, I think that's a compelling case in every part of the country. But things may be calming down as levelling up Secretary Michael Gove doesn't expect any more by-elections anytime soon. Well, I'm not expecting anyone to resign and trigger a by-election this week. I think it's important this week that we give the uh, Commons Committee a chance to publish their report. All of us can then form a judgment, but each of the individuals who has stood down has stood down for their own individual reasons. Ofsted have announced reforms to the rating system following the tragic death of Ruth Perry, a head teacher whose school was due to be downgraded. Ms Perry killed herself this year after learning an Ofsted inspection was to lower her school's grade from outstanding to inadequate. It spurred an outcry to scrap the one-word grading system, with her sister Professor Julia Walters saying the reforms don't go far enough. They don't go anywhere near far enough. The refusal to remove the single word judgment is, I think, a mistake. But despite coming under increasing pressure, Ofsted's Chief Inspector Amanda Spielman says getting rid of the single word ratings wouldn't make a difference. We could write a sentence that captured all the things that typically are reflected in an inadequate judgment and use that. But the, they know if the consequences are the same, if the significance of it is the same, it would come to mean exactly the same very quickly. Ukraine's long-awaited counter-offensive finally seems to be underway, as Kyiv claims to have made its first gains in reclaiming territory from Russia in the southeast of the country. Officials reported the national flag is once again waving over Storazhiv in the Donetsk region, with Ukrainian officials claiming 90 square miles have been retaken in the southeast of the country and seven settlements liberated. Overnight on Monday, a massive missile attack by Russia killed several people and destroyed buildings in the central city of Kriviri. Chair of the UK Defence Select Committee, Tobias Elwood, has urged caution towards the idea that any of this will be over quickly. I urge caution into assuming that we're just going to, the Ukrainians are just going to charge in and then the, the Russians will be dispersed and it will be all over very, very quickly. You've actually got the main front of Ukrainian capability still in reserves, if you like, ready for that um, uh, singular attack. Retire- Retired senior British Army Office Major General Rupert Jones explains why it might be so difficult. What the Ukrainians will be doing is probing, trying to find ways through this very, very difficult defensive layer that the Russians have created. It's like a wall. They've got to fight their way through in places the defences are 30 kilometres deep. The scandal-ridden former Italian PM Silvio Berlusconi has died aged 86. The billionaire media tycoon and former AC Milan owner entered politics as the head of his own Forza Italia party in the 90s and led three governments between 1994 and 2011. He made a comeback in 2017 despite a career tainted by sex scandals, allegations of corruption and a tax fraud conviction. Tributes have been pouring in for the man behind the infamous Bunga Bunga parties, including current PM Giorgia Maloney, whose governing coalition includes Berlusconi's Forza Italia as a junior member. Silvio Berlusconi was 
Above all, a fighter. He was a man who was never afraid to defend his beliefs, and it was exactly that courage and determination that made him one of the most influential men in the history of Italy. Still to come on the Smart 7, hopes for sports fans with dementia and a sleepover with Margot Robbie. Right after this. NetJets, the global private aviation leader, is known for personalizing every detail of your travels. Because NetJets' standard is not just to meet their definition of perfection, it's to exceed yours. Discover more at NetJets.com. Welcome back. Wembley is the first national stadium in the UK to become dementia friendly. It's part of a scheme that hopes to encourage all sports grounds to do the same. Stewards will be trained on dementia awareness, the website overhauled and the chaperone service expanded. Wembley Stadium director Liam Boylan explains the new partnership between the FA and the Alzheimer's Society to achieve the goal. So it was just sitting down and just understanding that we needed to listen and our staff needed to be patient and make sure that these people have a great time. Just to understand that there are many different types of fans who want want to still enjoy football. Is there anything Jodie Comer can't do? The Killing Eve actress has only gone and won a prestigious Tony Award for her first ever Broadway performance. She scooped Best Leading Actress for a one-woman show Prima Facie, where she portrays a defence lawyer who ends up in the witness box. It comes hot on the heels of her Olivier Award win for a West End debut in the same role. As she accepted the award, she said she was overwhelmed at the win. It's been a whirlwind. It's very surreal because I feel like throughout this process it has just been about putting one foot in front of the other. You know, when I started in London, I didn't know how I was going to get there, but was willing and really wanted to take the journey. Fancy getting into bed with Margot Robbie? Not you, sir. The Hollywood actress has taken Come On Barbie, Let's Go Party to a whole new level. Speaking ahead of the release of the much-anticipated Barbie movie on the 21st of July, she spilled the beans on the cast sleepover party in London. We had a Barbie sleepover. It was it was as fun as, you, as, it, as sounds. it sounds. It was Greta's idea, I can't take credit. We all went to, like, Claridge's, which is a really gorgeous hotel in, in London. We all like shared beds and like wore our pajamas and ordered room service and played games and found out Was that America kind of is like exceptionally competitive. <laughs> You've been listening to the Smart Seven. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 a.m. Hit that follow button and have a great day. Give us seven minutes, we'll give you the world.